In this video, I'm going to talk about the um, nuts and bolts of the singular value decomposition. Um, and then eventually that's going to lead us up to the proof of SVD. And after going through those, I'm going to go through an example of applying the singular value decomposition. Okay, so let's get started. So before we begin, um, there is a little bit of background information um, that I want to go through. Okay, so I'm gonna start that now. Okay. Some background. The first thing is that we need to define what a singular value is. What are singular values? Okay, so we're going to let A be a M by N matrix. Okay, so that means it has M rows and N columns. Okay. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take A transpose and multiply by A. So we're going to assume that this is a symmetric matrix. Okay, that just means that this matrix, this result, when you take the transpose of it, it's going to be itself again. Okay. So, all right. So, A is an n by n matrix. Right. Okay. And so we have, we're assuming that in this case, that A transpose times A is symmetric. Okay. And okay. orthogonally diagonalized. All right, so that just means that this allows us to, um, to factor uh, the matrix into, um, into an SVD or into SVD components, okay? Okay, so we're gonna let, we have a collection of vectors here. So we're gonna call it V1, V2, V of N. Be an orthonormal set. Okay. Not only that, well, it's an orthonormal basis. Or our vector space R sub n. Okay, corresponding to. Eigenvectors of this matrix, A transpose A. Okay. All right, so remember that, okay, we have a collection of vectors here that forms a fourth on normal basis. Okay. That just means that not only are these vectors orthogonal to each other, but if you take the norm of each one of those vectors, uh, basically get the length of those vectors is one, okay? Right, so each of these are unit vectors that are orthogonal to each other, okay? And also remember that uh, if you take the dot product of a vector from one of these sets, okay, and dot it with itself, then the result obviously must be must turn out to be zero. Oh, I'm sorry, um, with another vector, right? It must be zero, okay? So for example, if I take V1 and dot it with V3, 
then that has to be equal to zero because uh, because of the orth because they're orthogonal to each other. And that just means geometrically, geometrically, that means that those two vectors form a 90 degree angle. Okay? So they're orthogonal to each other. Okay. All right, so that's our, um, so that's our sort of orthonormal basis. And remember the term basis just means that any vector, if I select any vector from this vector space, then I can rewrite that vector in terms of a linear combination of those vectors of these, okay? And furthermore, these vectors are linearly independent of each other, okay? So those are the two, those are the two properties of what makes this the basis, is that those vectors are linearly independent of each other and any vector, right, in that vector space can be written as a linear combination of those, of these vectors, okay? All right. So well, those are the kind of the nuts and bolts that we need uh, for this um, for this SVD. All right, so um, so we're going to have to all right. So so these are the um, so these are the eigenvectors that we're that we're denoting. Okay? And of course, because we have eigenvectors, then there were, therefore we have to have the corresponding eigenvalues by definition. Okay? So we're going to denote those by we're going to have let lambda one, lambda two. Be the eigenvalues of A transpose A. Okay, and we're going to assume that because we have each one of these is a distinct eigenvector, um, that means we're going to have N eigenvalues. Okay, so let's do some calculation here. What I want to do is I want to take, so I'm going to take the matrix A and operate it on a vector, right? And then, okay, so we're going to basically take the norm, right, and then square it. And this, remember, this is just the same thing as taking A, V, I and dotting it with itself, okay, which can be written this way. Okay. That is just by definition, okay? Right. This is just the definition of the inner product, which is the notation for this. And so then we can go ahead and rewrite this, okay? Um, if you recall, there's a property for this, right? If here's a matrix, here's a vector, we can actually um, apply the transpose to that. So this is gonna give us VI transpose times A transpose, okay? So you switch these around and then take the transpose of each one of these individually. And I need to put a T there, okay? So that becomes this, okay? And then we have this part right here. Okay, so we have this equal to this equal to this, okay? All right, so let's continue. Okay, um, Okay. so remember that, um, so A transpose A, these, these vectors here, these eigenvectors are coming from this matrix. Okay, not from A, but from A transpose A. So that means for this part, okay, all right there's going to be, right, you're gonna have this, okay? So we have VI transpose times lambda, right, VI. Okay. All right, so that's what we have now, okay? Um, again, so because this, right, again, so we have the matrix and there's a corresponding eigenvalue here, okay? All right, so then furthermore, 
we can go ahead and rearrange this. Okay? This is going to be lambda i. Let me write that as a subscript. So lambda sub of i. So lambda is, is the it's the eigenvalue, right? So we can so that's a scalar. We can certainly take that out. Okay, we can rearrange this um, using those properties um, that you learned in the previous sections. So lambda i, and this is going to be multiplied by v i transpose v i. And so this, okay, um, <clears throat> v i because these so v i transpose times v i because those are Right, those are orthogonal as well as well. Or orthonormal means that they're also orthogonal. So by definition, right, this has to be it has to be one, okay, because it's orthonormal, right? Okay, so this is going to be lambda i, okay, because this part right here again, you take the transpose, right, multiplied by the vector, and, and because these are orthonormal, each of these is linked one, so therefore this has to be. That's a that is just the uh, property of order of orthonormal vectors, and that's true for i going from one to n. So let's make sure we write that. Okay, all right. Okay, so what we showed here was that basically, if you take a right, so a is acting on v of i, so there's a transformation there. So a is transforming the vector. And if you take the norm of that, okay, and then square it, that's going to be equal to the corresponding eigenvalue, okay? All right? And okay, so that should be V of I. Okay, so, um, so it's pretty interesting that you get from this transformation here, when A is acting on B, then you're going to get this eigenvalue, okay? Which kind of makes sense from, from the previous chapters, okay? But that's not surprising there. Okay. Um, let's see what else here. Okay, so another thing I want, so another thing I, I wanted to mention was that um, the eigenvalues, okay, so when it, the eigenvalues for A transpose A, okay, um, right, and, and we're assuming that's symmetric, um, those eigenvalues will be um, strictly bigger or equal to zero. Okay, so that's an important property. It's actually discussed um, a little bit further in chapter seven. So I'll just write that down here. Just indicated here as a note. So they're bigger equal to zero. And that's not too hard to show, actually. And I think it's even one of the, it's either proved in one of the um, sections in chapter seven or it's, um, it's left as a homework problem. Um, I know in my class, in my linear algebra class, I ask students to actually um, prove this and then I go through it in class. But in any case, um, that is an interesting result of, um, of symmetric matrices. Okay, so what are the, so we gone through all this. So what are, what are the singular values? Okay, so let's find that here. So the singular values of A, okay, turn out to be, um, turn out to be the square roots of the eigenvalues of A transpose A. Okay, so, all right. So we're gonna denote that here by sigma i. So again, so, 
and we're using the subscript I here to um, denote that you're applying it to each of the um, eigenvalues. Okay, and this is going from this. This is for I between one and n. Okay, since our original collection has n vectors. Okay, so now if you take a look at this result, okay, so we went through the mathematics here, okay, just some basic linear algebra here, and then now this is going to be, so we can take the square root of both sides. Okay, there it is. So really what this, so what this is showing is that the norms of these, or in other words, the links of these is nothing more than the square root of the corresponding eigenvalue for this eigenvector. Okay, so that's quite amazing actually, uh, which is, well, it is amazing, but then when you realize um, when you start to look at things a little deeper level, you start to make, it starts to make sense. Okay. All right. Okay. So that's, a, that's, um, so that is, um, that, is, that is how the singular values are related back to this um, mapping of this eigenvalue under A. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll let you give you a couple minutes to look over this and then we'll go to the next part. And there may be a question on this. I, I just kind of recall this, that there was, um, I think one or two of you may have emailed this um, to me or emailed me about this uh, because I did send this out in, in, I did send these notes out. So basically I'm going through these in more detail, um, but right here, okay, remember, so, yeah, so there's a question here. So remember that A transpose A, we're not interested in the eigenvalues of A, we're interested in the eigenvalues of A transpose A, okay? So this, right, so from here to here, okay, basically you have, think of this as a matrix, this is just a matrix, you can call this, you can call this matrix B, okay, and so you have this matrix times B of I, and because this, right, and, and so we're focusing on this part, okay, and so we have the eigen by, we have, sorry, we have the eigenvectors, okay, which is this, that means there's a corresponding eigenvalue, okay, that are, that are, um, that gives you that relationship between the uh, between the transformation of this and this and this eigenvector, okay? Which is the eigen uh, yeah, this eigenvector here, okay? All right. So that is where this is coming from, okay? So maybe I should have indicated. Maybe I should have positioned this more carefully here, okay? So this gets replaced by this. Okay. All right. All right. Let's. Uh, Go to the next part. So that's a little bit of a background on singular values. But now we can go to the theorem and start to prove this result. By the way, this, this is not the only factorization for matrices. There's many different types out there, but the SED is the, the most common one, um, especially at this level. Um, and that's useful for many different things like image processing and data analysis. Okay, so some of you have already probably have already looked into that. Um, let me go in. Oh, I'll keep that there for now. Okay, so let's go into. Let me go ahead and state the theorem, and then we can get into the little bit of the nuts and bolts here. All right, so we're going to let A and M by 
my end matrix. Okay, with rank. Okay, so remember rank, rank R. So remember the rank is just the number of pivots um, that that matrix has. In other words, that's the same thing as saying the number of basic variables. Okay. All right. And that also um, gives you the dimension of the column space of that matrix. Okay. So all these ideas are definitely related to each other. All right. So there exist. Okay, let's, we're gonna call this sigma because that's generally the notation that, that we use um, and that you can find throughout various linear algebra textbooks, okay? So sigma here, okay, so let me explain this a little bit. So sigma composes of, you have what's called a block matrix, okay? So we're gonna call that D, so, so it's a block matrix, okay? where D is the diagonal matrix, which means that it's just gonna have entries on the main diagonal. And then everywhere else, it's gonna be, um, we're gonna have zeros, okay? So again, this is going to be, this represents a matrix here, and then you have matrices with zero in it. So this is, again, this is what's called block matrices. And I think, let me just recall here, block matrices is one of those topics that's kind of omitted. Unfortunately, it's omitted from the um, NOVA online course, but it is something I do cover in my in my, in my face-to-face class. Um, it is, so if you want to know more about block matrices, something they call them, yeah, partition matrices, so 2.4. Um, so really, a lot of, a lot of, kind of going aside here, a lot of the um, bigger applications and, and linear algebra and numerical linear algebra are done through you know these type of matrices uh, because there's sometimes the matrices are so large they could be like a million by a million and then if you want to save or if you want to save on like computational time then what you can do is you can subdivide the matrix into smaller matrices and then you can do this you, you, and there's all, all sorts of applications you can do especially if you have like a parallel machine okay, to, to handle the computations but in any case, um, this is um, this is how we're going to use it here. Okay. So we have we're going to let sigma be this, where D is the diagonal matrix. Okay, with diagonal entries. of the first R singular, singular values. Okay, and again, the way those singular values are obtained is by taking the matrix A and transposing it, right? And then multiplying by A, finding those, right? So you're finding the eigenvalues of this matrix, okay, and then taking the square roots, okay? So those are called the R singular values of A. Great. Okay, so, all right. And then, so we're going to get, um, we're gonna get sigma one, sigma two, and we're gonna write these in, this, in um, descending order here, because when we, because it turns out that when you construct this, um, the diagonal matrix, these have, the diagonal values, singular values have to be, Decreasing. Okay. okay, and all these have to be bigger than um, have to be uh, bigger than zero because, and we don't use uh, we don't we don't use zero for um, to construct this. Okay, so technically, it has to be strictly bigger than zero for the value for the singular values that we're using. And again. Um, it's mainly right due to the fact that um, these eigen the eigenvalues of this are 
are positive. Okay, or, or it could be equal to zero. But then again, we don't use we don't use zero um, when we're constructing this. And there exists an M by M matrix, okay? specifically our orthogonal matrix. We're going to call that U, okay? And And an orthogonal matrix B, such that. Okay. Remember, this is just the this is just the theorem. So A can be decomposed into U times sigma times B transpose. Okay. So let's. So one thing you got to keep in mind is the dimensions. The dimensions here. Um, so U, right? So U is always going to be M by M. Sigma, right? So remember, sigma, so that means, right? So, um, right? Sigma is going to be, we said sigma was M by M. Okay. So that means V transpose, okay? V transpose has to be has to be in by n. Okay, so these, right, so these inner values match, right? So this is going to give us this, right? These two will give us n by n. And then when you multiply by V transpose, okay, you're going to get, um, you're going to end up getting an n by n matrix for, for A. Everything works out. Okay. So again, these match, you get n by n. Okay, these match, so this is going, right? so then you get n by n from here, and then n by n. Then you have this one, right? And so that's these two match, so you're going to end up with n by n. So when you're doing these type of constructions, these type of factorizations, that's something you always got to keep in mind. Um, when you're doing these, because you have to make sure that when you multiply these out, that you get the correct you get the correct size here. Okay. And also another thing here, don't call these dimensions, right? Don't say n by n dimensions. You basically they refer to as sizes. Dimension is remember, so dimension is um, another idea, right? So dimension has to do with the number of basis factors in the vector space, or whichever um, or whichever um, subspace or vector space you're defining. All right. All right. So that is the um, so that is the theorem. Okay. So, right. Okay. So let's go through this. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and write. I'm going to put this result here because we're going to eventually use this. So we've. So we've shown this, okay? Now we get to use it. Okay. All right. So All right. So we're going to let Okay, so the proof of this All right, so we're going to let the collection here V1, or sorry, V1, V2, if N. 
be an orthonormal basis. The orthonormal basis of our vector space R of M. So we have that A, so A acting on V of I, okay? and that's the way it's so in linear algebra. We all we usually um, we always say this is A acting on V because that is what it is. It's a mapping, right? So it's basically it's a function. Okay. And so that's going to give us. Okay, that's got to give us back this because remember, this is an orthonormal basis. So that's going to be lambda V of I. Okay. Remember, and so this turns out to be your, right? This is your uh, basically your eigenvectors. And so therefore, there has to be a corresponding eigenvalue okay, that gets, okay, that, gets um, that corresponds, that gives you. Um, this result, okay. Okay, so we're going to let, okay. okay. So A, so you're gonna take A, right? Taking A and, and mapping it or Act, or A is acting on each one of these vectors. Okay. Remember, think of A. A is just a coefficient matrix. Okay. That's your um, right. That is your what's doing the transformation. Okay. Okay. And so then that's going to be an ortho orthogonal basis. for the column space of A. All right, so again, so A is acting on each one of these vectors, so it's, um, it's intuitive to, that these will be in the column space of A, all right, and whatever these are, right? So, right, so these are going to give you vectors, so those vectors, because of this mapping, those vectors have to be in the column space of A. Remember, something like if I say a vector, right, let's say it's B. If I say vector B is in the column space of A, that means A times X equals to B uh, is consistent, okay? That's all that, that's all that means, right? Okay. So now what we're gonna do, okay? So next part of this proof is to normalize. Okay? We're gonna normalize these. Okay, and so that just means we're going to take these, right? right? We want to take each one of these vectors, okay, and divide by the norm. Okay, and so let's see what we get from here. So this, algebraically, this is the same as, let me just put zero there just to indicate that's a vector. So this is the same as, so this is the same as writing it this way. And so then let's go to the next, because it's gonna go off the screen here. 
So we have this here and one over, remember that this is equal to, right? This, okay, right? So let's call this, so let's call, no, let's write that first. So this is going to be, so this is gonna be one over the square root of lambda i. Again, so that's coming, that's using the result that we just showed earlier. Okay. And then in your book, so we, so in your, um, so the notation that's generally used for this is sigma, okay? Okay, it's, so it's less writing. So um, this is usually something I talk about in the beginning of, of these type of classes is that um, in math, we use a lot of shortcuts, right? A lot of different notations, okay? So instead of writing this, we'll just write sigma. Okay, so this is a very common thing to do. So this is the same as a b times one over sigma i. Okay. All right. And then we're going to let this, we're going to call this. Okay. This is what we're going to call. We're going to call this u. Okay. So this, this gives us basically a vector divided by scalar. So this is gonna be a, right? so this will be a vector. And so then this, okay, from here, because we're assigning u of i to this, this is gonna be, U of i times sigma i equals to a v. In fact, probably be better to write it this way. <coughs> this is a vector. And I'll put the sigma in front since that's a scalar. So. There we go. All right. So we have matrix operating on B, right? B is coming from here. And then this is equal to sigma. That's a scalar times um, times U, which is this. Okay. And that's true from, that's gonna be from one to R, where R is the rank of the, uh, of the matrix that you're, um, that we're given. So, all right, so what we wanna do in order, so this is where we have to be careful of the sizes, okay, to make things work. Um, so what we can do is we can extend this, okay? And we can extend this set. Sometimes, depending on the matrix, these may not necessarily go up to R, okay? So we, if not, then we can extend, okay? Okay. So if we don't have R of these, then we can always we can always do that. We can always extend this. Okay. So, all right. So let's write that here. We can extend it to an orthonormal basis. Okay. Right. And so, so let me just back up here for a minute. So we we so we have so the matrix is R, right? Has a rank of R. So we have R of those. But because sometimes you know the depending on the eigenvalues, um, depending on the matrix, um, we may and also to keep in mind to make the to make this compatible. Right, so that we end up getting an n by n matrix, then we may have to extend this. So that's uh, what I'm going to write here. So we're going to have u 
U1. Two and then up to U of M. Why, why M? Well, going back here, remember that U, another name for this, by the way, is a unitary matrix. Okay. So U is so U is M by M. Okay. So um, so that's so it's so we can do that. Of our vector space R sub M. All right. And that can be done. All right, this right here to give giving give if you're given a collection of vectors, okay, and all the way here, if you're given a collection of vectors, right, and you want to extend it, right, um, basically if you're if they're orthonormal basis, and if you want to extend those, then use what's use a process called the Gram-Schmidt process, okay, um, and that is again that is. Um, that is a section that's not discussed in um, in the uh, Nova Online course. So that is something I pointed out to the Nova Online team because um, I think there are some problems in the homework where you have to extend the basis, or there may not be. Um, I have to I have to take a look at it and see. Uh, but some of you were asking about that, okay? And that is in seven. Three. I'm sorry, not 7.3. I'm sorry, it's in 6.4, the Gram Schmidt process. Okay, so that's 6.4, okay. the Gram Schmidt process. All right, so if you are interested in that, um, knowing how to do this, um, and many of you are engineering, so eventually you have to know how to do that, um, you can go to 6.4. Okay. It's a very powerful tool. Okay. All right, so let's see what we got here. Okay. So we have, okay, let's go ahead and erase this part. This is just a statement of the theorem. So erase this. Excuse me. Okay, we're gonna let you. So we're gonna. So the again, the way we. So we're trying to get. Right, we're trying to get the information from here. Okay. Um, so U is constructed by taking these and putting them into the matrix. Okay, these vectors here. So U one. By the way, that. Um, let me go and write this out, and I'll explain this notation. U M. So this is basically, this is just saying, this is, so each of these is vectors. And so you're creating the matrix U by putting these in. So each of these is column vectors. So that's some textbooks um, use this type kind of notation, use this kind of notation here, okay? Um, and then we're going to let V, same idea here, since we know what those are, Right, those are coming from there. So we have V1, V2. Okay, again, V is right. So V here is n by n uh, because we know that well, it's a square matrix, right? So this is going to be up to V of n. Okay, <coughs> excuse me. Oh, all right. Okay, so U, right? U and V, okay. Are orthogonal matrices by construction. Um, and again, sometimes this is called a unitary matrix. Okay, um, so that is specifically built by this property. Okay. By this. Okay. So I'm just going to put a note here. So if, if you're taking an engineering course or math course and you're talking about unitary matrices, now you, right now you know what it is. Okay. 
a lot of, like I said, there's a lot of vocabulary in linear algebra. All right, so, um, all right, so now let's see, we, we, let's see what we got here. We have A times V, okay? And so this, so A is going to act on V. So that's going to be A. So the way we interpret this, right? Another way to, or another way to represent this is that A is going to distribute into all these. Right? Remember that is going back to, if I remember chapter two, or no, or no, sorry, chapter one, they talk about, or sorry, chapter two, they talk about taking a matrix and multiplying by matrix. And essentially what it is, is just baking it down into a matrix times each vector, okay? And that, and I do recall mentioning that that's the way you should be thinking about these. You should be thinking about these kind of operations in terms of columns, okay? Because it makes everything, makes life a little easier to understand. Okay, so A times V of one, and then you have A, V two, so on. That's all it is, okay? And again, so this is a vector, this is a vector, so I'm gonna put that notation in. Okay, so that's what this looks like, okay? And then you have, okay, so one, so this, okay, so we have to back up here. So again, because, um, let's see, we have to be a little careful here. We don't, All right, so because the matrix has R rank, so I have to be a little careful here. We're not going to use all these vectors. Right? All right, okay. so it has to go up to whatever rank it is. And then the rest will be zeros. Just fill those in to make things work out. Okay. I'll just put dots there. Okay. So you have a zero vector, everything else, right? For, for the end. Okay. <clears throat> okay. And then, so this, okay, A times V going, so this is going back here now, right? We have A times V equal to that. Sigma I times U of I. Okay, so let's expand on that. Okay. So that is going to be Sigma one times U one. Sigma two to U two and so on. Okay. So it's going to be consistent with this because again, um, our matrix only, we're assuming the matrix has rank R. Okay. Um, so this is going to be Sigma R. Okay. And U of R. Okay. And then zero everywhere else. Okay, so you may need to think about this a little bit. In fact, it's easier to see it's easier to see this with a um, with an example. Okay. All right. So basically, all this is we're taking a of v, and then right, um, and then that's equal to this. So we're writing this out in more detail. Okay. Okay, so AV, which can be written this way, rotation-wise is equal to, each one of these is equal to this. Okay, okay. Um, let's go over here. So I'm going to move this. I'm gonna move this here. Okay, so we're gonna let, so let D, okay, so we said D was the diagonal matrix, okay, with the diagonal entries of your singular values. Okay, so,
uh, diagonal entries are these singular values like up to sigma r. And then we have, um, so basically now, let's erase this part here. So we have u of sigma. And so we have M of those. Remember that U is your unitary matrix. It has M columns and then sigma. So sigma is going to look like this. So it's going to be sigma one, sigma two, all the way up to sigma R. Okay. And then let's see. So basically you have, so you have a, you have a matrix here. Okay. So that's, that's D. So that's your diagonal matrix. And then everything else should be zero. So that's how you, that's how you should construct Sigma. Okay. And then, so this, okay, so this again, so this is putting these two pieces together, U and Sigma. Okay. And okay, and then that is equal to this. That backwards, sorry. That's sigma r, u of r, and then we have zero for everything else. So, okay, so again, each one of these is a vector. That's, okay, and that's, um, so if we take this, right, if you take this and multiply this, because this is a diagonal, then basically you're getting u1 times sigma 1. Or I can say, sorry, sigma one times u one, right? And then sigma u two, sigma two, and then u of m with this one. Okay. So again, it doesn't matter where you put the sigma, you know, the scalar in front or or um, or in front or 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 afterward, okay? Because it's a scalar. All right. So this is now, right? So this u times sigma, okay? Because remember, we showed, right, right? We have this here. Each one of these is equal to this. So this is equal to this. So we have U of sigma equal to AB, okay? All right, so now this is what we have, right? So from here, we have like U sigma equals to AB. So now what we can do is we can go ahead and um, multiply. We can multiply both sides by V transpose. Okay, so just multiply both sides by V transpose. We know this is equal, we just showed that. And so then we end up getting um, this. We end up getting this. We get u sigma times v transpose equals to a. The reason we get a there is because v, so this is v times v transpose. This is what's called the outer product as opposed to um, the inner product, right? Inner product, you're taking the vector time, the transpose of the vector and multiplying it by, um, multiplying it by, um, the, um, the original vector, okay? Here, you're taking V and, and multiplying it by V transpose. Well, remember that V, okay? Uh, we're, 
we're assuming that so this is going to so this is going to give us back a matrix. Okay, so remember the inner product gives you back a scalar, but the outer product gives you back a matrix. So and remember that because these are orthonormal vectors that's contained in V. So by definition, so by by definition, right? Um, this should be I. Should be an identity matrix, and when you multiply identity matrix with the matrix A, you're going to get back A. Okay, and so there is the proof. And this proof also provides a way to um, to construct these. Okay, um, and I'm going to show you how to apply that in the next example. All right. So it's a very um, it's a very nice. Um, a very nice theorem. Um, like I said, the SVD can be used in all sorts of things: um, image processing, data analysis, um, robotics. <coughs> okay, so let's look at an example now. I saw this. So hopefully, you know, this, uh, this going through this theorem and going through this proof, maybe that opens up some more, uh, some more questions or may, you may be able to, you know, see where all these ideas are connected now. Okay. So let's look at an example. Let's see. So let's say we want to construct and want to construct single value decomposition of B so we have four. Let me write that a little bit better. Four, eleven, fourteen, eight. Seven and minus two. Okay. All right. So let's. So what, a good a good practice or a good habit, um, especially when you're doing these type of factorizations, is to do a little bit of a do a little bit of a, not dimensional analysis. Do a little bit of size analysis. Okay. Let's see what we have here. Okay. So there's our matrix A. Right. We're trying to find the components. So U sigma B transpose. So we know that a, we know that a is two by three, okay. and so so a general rule of thumb is that this matrix a and sigma have to be the same size. Okay, so this is two by three. So remember that v, right? So v, uh, u and v have to be square, right? B definitely, so three by three, and then um, U, right? so U has to be, in order for this to work, this has to be two by two. Okay, first thing is to find the, uh, to find the single, to find the um, singular values of this matrix. So that means we need to find the, uh, we need to find the eigenvalues of A transpose A. Okay. Um, so, Right, so that right, so we need to construct a. We need to find a transpose a. Right, so we have a transpose a, and I'll do this in a different color here. Typically, I do these um, like this. All right, so this is going to be. Uh, Four, eight, eleven, seven, fourteen, 
minus two. So you probably already know how to do this part. Okay. So you can see we're going to end up getting uh, we're going to end up getting a square matrix here. So it turns out, okay, and I'll show you, you know, I'll save you the. I'm not going to bore you with the details here, but again, it's just matrix multiplication. So you end up getting 80, uh, 140. But again, if you do have questions on something on the detail, just let me know. Okay. okay, so there's our matrix. As we expect, it should be a right. We ended up getting a three by three. Um, so now the next step um, is to well, so that's our a transpose a, and we want to find the singular values. So we need to find the eigenvalues for this matrix. Okay. So that just means that. We're going to solve for, remember, so to get the eigenvalues, okay. right? Remember that you're taking a little bit of review here. You're taking the determinant of A minus lambda I, okay? And setting that determinant equal to zero. Okay. And the reason why you want to set it equal to zero is because you want to get a non-trivial solution. For the um, uh, for this system, okay. So let me just so that is your right. So there's your corresponding eigenvector, right? These are your eigenvectors. Eigenvectors are your corresponding eigenvalue. Okay. And so remember that this can be written. This is the same thing as, okay? and then we can factor out an x. But to do that, to keep it compatible with the sizes here, because this is a matrix and this is a uh, this is a scalar. So to make so to keep this preserved, you want this to be a uh, difference of matrices, right? So we put an i there, right? So so i times lambda is just lambda. So um, so that's just matrix algebra. Okay? And then we want to so to solve this, we want the non-trivial solution. We know, we know it has a trivial solution. This is so basically this is what's called a homogeneous equation. Okay. Um, every so every homogeneous equation has a has a trivial solution. Okay, but we want a non-trivial. And you learn back in chapter one that in order for this system to, to have a non-trivial solution means it needs to have some free variables. Well, that just corresponds, right? That just implies that the determinant of this matrix, right, has to be zero. Okay. Right. So all, like I said, yeah, all these, uh, all these ideas in chapter one, and even in chapter two, uh, they're used throughout these other chapters. Okay. Um, but anyway, that is um, that is what we're going to do here. So we're going to take eighty minus lambda. And just double check myself, see if make sure I didn't make any errors here. Okay, so this is so okay. So this is the determinant of a minus lambda i, where a is this, where this is h. Oh, not a, but a transpose a. So we're gonna set. By the way, so this is just another notation. So basically, this is just saying that we're taking this and setting it equal to zero. Okay. All right. Um, so when you do that, okay, again, I'll save you the, um, and I'll save your time, not by going through the details of that, but to do this, you, so to go into the determinant, you know, you can use, um, so basically using the cofactor expansion, you end up getting this polynomial.
Actually, to be honest, I did this on a I did this using using a tool called Octave. Should I go and pass that part? Yes. Okay. I think there should be an extra zero there. Sorry. Okay. But this turns out to be what's called the characteristic polynomial, as you if, if, as you recall. Okay. Uh, characteristic this being the characteristic polynomial, um, and then you and then with equal zero, that's the characteristic equation, okay? or something they call it the auxiliary equation. Uh, but solving this, it turns out that the eigenvalues are going to be zero, 90, and 360. Okay. All right. So, okay. Let's see here. All right. So again, we're not in our construction of sigma. We don't. We're not going to use zero, but um, but we do need to get the i. We do need the corresponding eigenvectors for zero. Okay. So um, so let's start with um, zero here. Okay. okay. So that's going to be our next step: is to find the eigenvectors. Okay, so again, we found the um, we found our eigenvalues, okay, um, and then right, and so eventually, what we're going to do to construct sigma, we're going to have to take the square root of these okay, of these eigenvalues, okay. But but now we need to find the eigenvectors of this. Okay? So basically, you, if you recall, you just plug those back into here because this forms the um, this forms the coefficient matrix to the system that we had earlier up here. So let's start with lambda equals to zero. Okay, so plugging those in, we're going to end up getting this. And then we can um, right, do an REF here. So you can use your cat, like I said, anything beyond like chapter, anything in chapter four beyond, you can use your calculator to do this. Okay. So don't, you know, you don't, don't waste time in doing the steps for this. Okay. All right. So this is going to give us one, zero, one. Okay. And not surprising when you you know when you're whenever you're doing these type of um, whenever you're um, you know doing this um, you always get at least one row of zeros because we're letting we because we want the determinant to be equal to zero. Okay. Um, so we have one free variable here. Okay. I'm going to recall some, just call some things here. So this is, right, so this is your corresponding to your, um, to your basic variables. So X3, right, recall X3 is a free variable. So I'm going to call this just to be consistent with my notes. You can use whatever, you know, whatever variables you want, but just to be consistent with the notes, I'll use X, Y, and Z here. Okay, so, right. Okay, so we have Z, okay. 
Okay, so we're going to let z be equals to t, where t is some real number. Okay, and it looks like I'm running out from there. Okay, so that's our free variable. So again, what this is saying is that if you recall from chapter one, you're letting z be any value, and so then you're. You, 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 you could use any letter you want. Okay, so it's just not, you know, it's not good practice to let these be the same, you know, to be the same letter. It's just, it's just something that's been ingrained into me uh, since I learned, since I've been learning about these. Okay, so, uh, but in any case, so Z is a free variable. Okay, and then uh, from there, we can get Y in terms of our free, in terms of the free variable. So Y is just going to be equal to minus one half T. Okay. And then x, um, x is going to be equal to minus t. It's coming directly from here. Okay. So again, these are things that we learned, uh, you know, solving this something from chapter one. Okay. Um, so now we can go ahead and write our, get, write our um, eigenvector here. Okay, so we have uh, minus t, minus one half t, and then t. So x vector, so they have the components x, y, and z. Okay. And so then we can go ahead and write this out. We can go ahead and factor, write this in what's called parametric form. So basically this gives us this. So this is telling us um, that any, for any t value, we get, um, we get an eigenvector. Okay. So in fact, the solution to this, right, which is the null, so the null, the eigenspace, Right, the eigenspace is just the um, is just the span of this vector. That's all that is, and so um, you know we want to normalize. Okay? Sorry, we want to uh, we want to pick something. Okay, so we can pick uh, we can let t be anything. Doesn't matter. Okay, because any any t value will be in a, will give us a solution. So let's choose t to be equals to one. Okay, and so we end up getting. Minus one, minus one half, one. Okay, that will work. Okay, the factorization is is it's not unique. All right, the numbers can you know you have infinite choice here for t. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. So there's our. We can use this as our eigen as one of our eigen vectors. Okay. Um, let me see. Did I? Oh. I think I, you know what? I think I was looking at the wrong card here. Let me, sorry. I think this is for, sorry, uh, this is for, I'm gonna back up here. I'm sorry. I was looking at the wrong one here. This should be, what I'm gonna do is just go back, sorry. It's late in the day. So I was using the wrong matrix here. Um, so this should be one, zero, minus two, zero, one, two, Zero, zero, zero. Okay. But the matrix I had was for the other one. It's for the other lambda. Okay. So let's go through this again. So we have let Z be equals to T, where T is some real value. Okay. And then um, Y. So again, going back here, these are our basic variables. So we have X, Y, and Z. So Z is going to be equal to T, Y is going to be equal to minus two T, it's coming from here, and then X is equal to uh, two T. Okay. So now X is gonna be, so we have two T minus two T and T. All right, so there it is. So there, there's the correct one. So. I apologize for that. I had the wrong, um, I had the wrong matrix here, um, but now it's okay. Okay, so we have, um, so this turns out to be the, so this turns out to be the solution to the eigenspace for this um, corresponding eigenvalue. All right, <clears throat> so um, we can let T be equals to one. That'll be fine. And remember, this is so what we're doing is we're using this to create 
um, to create our matrix V. Okay. <clears throat> so we, so matrix V, go back here, this has to be, um, these components have to be orthonormal. So let's go ahead and um, normalize that vector. Okay. We're gonna normalize this. Okay. So that just means we're gonna divide by the length of this. So we're gonna call this, I'm gonna call this V3. The reason I'm using V3 here is because uh, notice that I'm going from starting from zero and then working our way up. So eventually we're going to get V1, V2, and V3 for those values. Okay. So we have to put them in descending order. Okay. Um, so let's normalize this. Okay. So we're going to use, so that's V3. So V3, I'm going to call this hat. So we're going to divide by, so um, that's going to be what? We're going to, so that's, if we take the norm of, I'm sorry, if we take the length of this vector, that's going to be two squared plus minus two squared plus one. So that gives us nine. Square root of nine is three. So we divide everything by, uh, by three. So that's, I'm going to call it V hat. That's just another way to represent a, uh, a unit vector. Okay. All right, so that's um, so that's the corresponding eigen that we can. So this will, this is still within the set. Okay, so this is our eigenvector for this eigenvalue. Okay. All right, let's do let's go on here. Let's do for ninety. So plugging those, so plugging 90, 90 and back into the matrix that we had here, we're going to end up getting minus 10, 100, 40. Okay. 100, 80, 140, 40, 40 and 110. Um, something else to notice here that these are, um, notice that these are um, symmetric matrices. Not surprising because um, we're working with a symmetric, um, we're working with A transpose A. So generally speaking, um, these, these matrices will always be symmetric. And so, okay, so there's our, so again, plugging 90 back into that, um, into, um, into the um, uh, the matrix that we had earlier right? for the um, for the determinant. Okay. So this again, doing an RREF. We're going to end up getting one zero one zero one one half zero zero zero. So. All right, just make sure here, okay. Okay, um, Okay. so now again, so we have basic variables here for X and Y. It's not surprising that we get this row zeros here. So again, we're going to, right, we're gonna let Z be equal to T, where T is some real value. And then we have y is equal to minus one half t. And from here, x is going to be equal to minus t. And, and so we end up getting, so minus t minus one half t and t. And then writing this in parametric form, we're gonna get minus one, minus one half and one. So again, this, um, the eigenspace, right? This is basically the eigenspace for this corresponding eigenvalue. So it's spanning a vector, spanning this vector. Okay. Um, and so now we want to get v. We want to get v hat two. Okay. okay. So the length of this vector turns out to be. Um, 
Let's see, it turns out to be three as well. Okay. In fact, we can let if we so if we let T B equals to one, use that. That's fine. Let's see here. Let me just double check something real quick here. Let's see, point five. So the link, okay, so the link turns out to be um, three halves for this. So if we take, we're going to take each one of these and divide by three halves. So, all right. So I'll just denote that here. Um, okay. Again, so that's just taking the square of these, take the sum of the square of these, and then, um, and then take the square root. Get nine fourths and the square of that is three halves. So divide each one of these by three halves, you end up getting minus two thirds, uh, minus one third, and two thirds. Okay, and you can check, right? I think even somebody in the discussion board pointed out that you can check your solution, right? Just take this, just take the norm of this to get one, right? So you have. Um, so from here, you have four ninths plus another four ninths plus one ninth. So that gives you nine over nine. Same thing here. If you take so four ninths plus one ninth plus four ninths. So that's going to give you nine over nine, which is one. Okay. So there is V2 hat. Okay. Um, so now let's do it for lambda equals to 360. And I'm going to, okay, so I'm going to write these over here because we need to use it for our construction. So we had V hat. Got to keep track of these. Actually, what I'll do is I'll just write down the other one because it's the same process. So I don't want to, um, I think a lot of, I think most of you are already um, familiar with this process. So I'll just go ahead and write the next result without going through the details. Um, so that is, so for lambda equals to 360, okay, for that, so for V2, sorry, for V1, let's go over here. So for V1, it, it turns out to be one third, two thirds, and then two thirds. So again, same idea, take 360, plug into that matrix that we had earlier, and then find the um, eigen, uh, find the eigen, the eigen uh, vectors, and then, um, and then let, choose T to be something, doesn't matter, right? Um, and then normalize that vector. All right, so there's our components. Okay, so we have, okay, so for this, we have this one, okay. Oops. Uh, this one here, and we have V1, and then we have V2. All right. So um, let's, okay, so let's basically, right, let's put those here. I need to make some more space. So for lambda equals to zero, we have V, V hat. Um, 
minus two thirds minus one third and two thirds. And then for lambda equals to 360. Oh, it was calling this speed one. Okay. All right, so for lambda zero, we have this, we, we have three. Um, this is for nine lambda or eigenvalue 90, and this is for eigenvalue 360. Okay. So now, so that's going to, um, so we're going to use this to put together or to construct our um, matrix V. So now we need to, um, we need to, yeah, so now we can go ahead and put this together and we need to construct, so we can now construct V and um, sigma. this here. Okay. So let's do sigma first. So sigma one. Remember, so sigma one, um, so we have to put this in descending order. So sigma one will be the square root of 360, which works out to be 6 root 10. Sigma two is going to be the square root of 90, okay, uh, which is 3 root 10. All right. And we don't need to worry about this one. So sigma. Remember, sigma has to be two by three. So here's your entries, right? So you have six root 10 and then three root 10. Right? It has to be two by three. So, so that means it needs to have two rows and then uh, three columns. So the rest is going to be zero. All right, so there it is. And then V. So V is going to be V1, okay? So this is where, right? So you have to be, so the organization here is important. So this corresponds to this, this singular value. So that corresponds to this eigenvector, okay? Okay, so V1. Um, Okay. okay, so let me, so we need V transpose. So let me go ahead and put it, I'll put V here for now. So this is going to be one third, two thirds. Of... Okay, and then next one is this. This is this, right? This is the, uh, this is for singular value, for the second singular value, which corresponds to this one. So, so that's going to go in row, sorry, in column two. Um, and then the next one, right, is for zero. So that's the only space we have here is this. <laughs> and then we can go ahead and take, we need, we need V transpose. So we just take the transpose of that. So it's gonna be one third, two third, two third. Um, and then minus two thirds. Minus one third, positive two thirds, and then we have two thirds, uh, minus two thirds, and then one. That should be it. Make sure I'm not messing up a sign here. Everything looks good now. So the diagonals will be the same, and then these values switch, right? So these will switch around. Okay. These are the same, and then these will switch. Okay. All right, so now next thing is to construct U, right? our unitary matrix. Okay. 
And that is done by that um, equation that we derived earlier. Okay. So I'll write here. Okay, so let's start with um, start with U one. Okay, so one over sigma. We start with sigma one. Okay, uh, so sigma one is going to be this one. Okay, so one over um, six root ten. times A acting on B. So I'm gonna go ahead and write A here just to show you the details of the calculation. And then um, V, so V, V1. That's why, you know, it's important to label these with numbers and be careful. Again, if you have, it's, um, sometimes it's better to construct these first and then worry about U at the end. So, um, so U1 will be this. Okay, so it's one third, two thirds, and then two thirds. Okay, so this is going to give us, this is two by three, right? This is a three by one. So this is gonna give us a two by one matrix. We end up getting three root 10 and one, one root 10, sorry, three over root 10. And I'll just, um, I'll just, let's see, three over, yeah, I'll, um, yeah, I'll just keep the, uh, I'll just keep the, I'll just keep them that form. Don't need, don't need to worry about rationalizing. Okay. Um, and then for U2, okay, we have one over sigma two. Sigma two was three root 10 times A. And then V2. Okay, so doing the calculation there, we end up getting one over root 10 and minus three over root 10. So remember that this, um, so this forms a basis for R2, so we're good. So we don't need to, uh, we don't need to extend this basis since the size here is two by two. So working at R2. Okay. So I'll just put a note here. So if we had gotten just one eigenvector, then uh, we would have to extend it. Uh, we would have to find another. I, we would have to find another one that's that's orthogonal to this one. Right? And I think one of, there was somebody asking about that in the discussion board. And uh, basically, that was the eigenvector was um, was very simple, so you could easily tell. What, I think it was like one zero, so you can use like zero minus one. It's pretty. It's not. Not too terribly difficult. It's pretty obvious of which one, which uh, what eigenvector to use, make that a basis. Um, but something more complicated, which I don't. I, again, I I had to look at the homework to see. Uh, but you would use uh, the Graham Schmidt process. But I but for the Graham Schmidt process, um, it's ideal if you have um, if you have like two or more vectors. All right, so, um, so, but anyway, we're good here. And that's another reason why we should check the sizes here, because that will give you insight onto, uh, into the number of, um, in terms of the number of vectors you need to form the basis. Make sure it spans for that um, vector space for it. Okay, so there's, we have everything. We have U, we have, um, we have V and we have sigma. Okay, so, so let's go ahead and put together U. Okay. 
there's U1, and then U2. All right. <coughs> so we have it. We have it now. So A, I think we can come to A. A is going to be U. There's U, sigma is here. X root 10, sorry. And then we have V, V was over uh, V transpose. So, so V transpose, so we have one third, Minus two thirds, two thirds, two thirds, minus one third, minus two thirds, and two thirds, two thirds, and one. Okay. There it is. Okay. Double check here. Make sure my signs are correct here. Yeah, should be all right. So if you take and multiply these matrices, right, um, you end up getting back this matrix. So that is the SVD, right? That's the singular value decomposition for, for our matrix. So, um, so I hope this helps a little bit. Um, at least gives you some of the nuts and bolts behind why the SVD works. Um, and it's really just a transformation. It's just a, it's a very, it's all, that's all it is. It's based on transformations um, that were discussed in the previous chapters. Um, and then again, and I hope, also hope this gives you an insight in how to do these calculations. Um, so uh, we'll stop here. And again, if you have, um, if you have any questions, um, you know, free feel to email me or you can, uh, post it in the in the discussion board. I know several of you have been doing that, so it's, and several of you have been meeting with a lot of you over Zoom. So it's good. It's good that you are keeping up with the material. Okay. All right. So I'll stop here, and then um, I'll go ahead and conclude this.